Hey everyone, so this is my last review of the year and I just wanted to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I want to thank my three fans for all the comments and feedback you've given me over the year. I really appreciate it and I love all of the recommendations that you guys give me. And trust me, I write them all down. I would love to get to all of them someday and I really hope I get the chance. So coming next year, I've got a whole list of movies I can't wait to explore. So I hope you'll join me. So again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Your beard doesn't have one of those things that goes over your ears. Well, that's because it's real. Just like I'm really a Santa Claus. Oh, go ahead. Pull it. <laughs> well, it's a Christmas season, and I thought I'd revisit an old classic from my latest review. Miracle on 34th Street from 1947. It's just a classic, and Edmund Gwen is darn near perfect in this film as Kris Kringle. I'll summarize the film and then give some closing thoughts. So the film opens up with what appears to be a Santa-looking fellow walking around the city. It's played here by Edmund Gwen, this excellent English actor. He's been in a bunch of films I've reviewed on this channel. Now he stops to tell a guy who's setting up some reindeer in a store window that he's getting them in the wrong order. And the guy just looks at him like he's crazy. So we kind of get the hint that, hmm, could this be Santa? Well, we cut over to some preparations that are being made for the Macy's Day Parade. There's actress Maureen O'Hara as the character Doris, who's giving out instructions to clowns about where to go. Chris Kringle, meanwhile, sees this semi-drunken Santa trying to figure out how a whip works for his sleigh, and goes up and shows him, and then realizes he's been drinking. You smell like beef and cheese, he tells him. <laughs> well, no, not really. But he does tell him off for being drunk and says he should be ashamed because, you know, he's trying to be Santa. Well, Doris finds out about this drunken Santa Claus and realizing that this mysterious Kris Kringle fellow just happens to look an awful lot like Santa, on the spot, just pleads with him to cover as their Santa. And he agrees. And sure enough, boom, there he is in the parade, waving at everyone, and he gets right into the role just perfectly. Well, Doris heads home, and she's looking for her daughter, Susan. And she's there watching the parade with their friend, Fred. It's played by actor John Payne, who I caught not long ago in the film, Kansas City Confidential. He's just hanging out there with Susan, who is played here by a very young Natalie Wood. And they're watching the floats outside the window. Now, he apparently wanted to meet with Doris, and sneaky fellow that he is, he's basically just hanging out with her daughter to try to get closer to Doris crafty fellow. Well, Fred is invited to dinner with the family. Now, Chris Kringle, meanwhile, he's in a locker room after his busy shift of playing Santa, and he's chatting with the janitor, Alfred, played by Alvin Greenman, a good-natured kid who talks to him about how he loves playing Santa and the joy that it brings him. Well, Chris Kringle, you know, he's a little disappointed with the materialism he sees in this holiday season, and he rips up a list of toys that he's supposed to recommend to kids. You know, Santa is going to do it his own way. So Santa is going to work for Macy's here. And he's soon sitting in the Santa chair. And he's asking kids what they'd like for Christmas. Now, one kid wants a fire truck that Macy's just doesn't happen to carry. So Chris Kringle tells the mom to go to another store that she's pretty sure that she can get one there. Now, the manager, Mr. Shellhammer, finds out about this and he's kind of frustrated. What a great name, by the way. Shellhammer. I love it. He's played here by Philip Tong. Now, I caught him recently in the film House of Wax with Vincent Price. He was briefly in that film. Well, Fred brings young Susan to meet with Chris Kringle. Now, she's a little bit skeptical, but she might be a little convinced because his beard is at least a real one. I mean, you know that usually if a guy has a beard, it's a sign of character and trustworthiness. But anyhow, Susan sneaks back and kind of watches... Chris Kringle interact with some other kids. Now, a girl comes up who only speaks Dutch, and Chris Kringle somehow, magically, can speak Dutch. Maybe he's got Superman's ability to speak other languages, or maybe he's just spent a lot of time in the Netherlands. Who knows? But skeptical Susan starts to wonder. Now, her mom, Doris, is, well, kind of a stick in the mud when it comes to this whole Santa mythos, and really wants this Chris Kringle guy to say who he really is. And he says it's Chris Kringle. She gets his employment card, which is an odd one because it shows his name is actually Chris Kringle, but his address isn't the North Pole. Rather, it's a Long Island old folks home. 
but also curious, there's no mention of Mrs. Claus. I wonder what happened to her. But he's got the reindeer listed as his next of kin. So, a little weird. So Doris wants him gone. Now, soon, however, she's called to meet with Mr. Macy himself and a bunch of the employees. He's played here by actor Harry Antrim. And Mr. Macy loves the honesty of this Kris Kringle and his Santa Claus. And he wants everybody to show the same kind of decency with their customer service. And if needed, and they don't have a particular item, refer them to other places. Now, Doris has uh, apparently fired Kris Kringle and needs to bring him back. But before he can come back to work, he has to undergo a mental evaluation. Now, he doesn't seem to mind. I mean, I would. I mean, drug screenings are bad enough, but uh, having to see a psychiatrist? But anyhow, he agrees, and he sees Susan and her daughter as a challenge that he has to meet regarding what is really wrong with Christmas and people not believing and so on. Chris Kringle goes to meet with Mr. Sawyer, this nervous psychiatrist character. He's played by Porter Hall. He's one of those actors I've seen in a bunch of other films like The Petrified Forest. Chris Kringle just cheerfully answers all the questions and never seems to lose his cool. So he's over for dinner with Doris, and while Doris works on the food, he's hanging out with Susan and talking to her about using her imagination more, you know, and teaches her, you know, how to act like a monkey, because that's important. And it's a cute and silly scene. Now, Fred offers that Chris can stay with him, much to the apparent irritation of Doris. Now, that night, as Susan goes to bed, she shares with Chris Kringle that all she really wants for Christmas is a nice, full-sized colonial house. That seems reasonable. Chris says he'll see what he can do. Uh, this will be a key detail later in the film, so remember this, folks. Now, the next day, over at Gimbel's, they've been hearing about Macy's new policy of referring others to other stores when something isn't available, and they decide to do the same thing. And soon enough, both Mr. Macy and Mr. Gimbel are there to meet with Chris Kringle. Now, Macy gives him a check as a gift that Chris says he's going to use to buy an x-ray machine for a doctor friend of his. But realizing the check won't be enough, Mr. Gimbel offers to cover the difference, and they all have a laugh together. Ah, holiday cheer for all. Well, the next day, Chris has lunch with Alfred. Remember, the janitor guy from earlier. Alfred's a little bit glum because he can't play Santa Claus. The psychologist character told him a bunch of hooey that someone that dresses up like Santa and gives out gifts is dealing with a guilt complex. Well, Chris tells him that that's a lot of rubbish, and then he storms out to tell Mr. Sawyer himself that he's a contemptible fraud. However, Chris bops him with an umbrella and then leaves. Well, Mr. Sawyer acts like he was knocked out from the blow. Right as Susan arrives, oh, that scheming character, now, he arranges to have Chris taken away to Bellevue Hospital. It's like a mental hospital. Fred gets a call at his law office and finds out that Chris has been committed. And he says he'll be right over. So he talks to him. Now, Chris admits that he failed his test intentionally because he's convinced that Doris participated in Mr. Sawyer's evil scheme. But Fred tries to convince him otherwise. But Chris can't just leave and he will need Fred's legal help to help him get the release from this Bellevue Hospital. Well, Fred meets with Judge Harper, actor Gene Lockhart, I've seen previously in films like His Girl Friday, and says that he will be defending Mr. Kringle. Fred gets the press informed about what is going on, and it's all over the newspaper headlines, you know, this trial of Santa. Now, even Judge Harper gets the cold shoulder from his grandkids, since he's putting Santa on the stand. Well, we cut to the court, and this is just a hearing, not a trial. Chris Kringle takes a stand, and the district attorney, Thomas Mara, starts with his questions. He's played here by Jerome Cowan, who I've seen before in films like The Maltese Falcon. He gets Chris to admit that, yes, he is Santa Claus. Fred brings up the defense and says that he will prove that, yes, indeed, he is Santa Claus. So back at Doris's place, she and Fred get into a heated argument about this whole thing, and Fred stands up for defending Santa. Fred believes in him, and he's going to go the distance for him at court. So we go back to the courtroom. Mr. Macy takes a stand to say that, yes, Chris Kringle is actually Santa. Now, the judge, during all of this, has this political advisor there. It's Charlie Halloran. He's played by actor William Frawley of My Three Sons fame. And he's kind of emphasizing to the judge that this could really hurt his future political career if he doesn't end up ruling in favor of Santa. 
So the trial commences, and Fred has the son of the DA, Tommy, take the stand and testify before his own dad that Kris Kringle is Santa. It's kind of a cute scene. The DA concedes, but then he asks for the defense to offer proof that Chris is truly Santa on the basis of some competent authority. So the court is adjourned to the next day. Well, Susan writes a letter to cheer up Chris, and Doris adds her own note at the bottom of the letter, I believe in you too. Well, the letter winds up in a mailroom where the guy sorting the letters calls over a supervisor about it. Because, you know, it's a letter to Santa. They don't really know what to do with it. And they decide to send all of these pro-Santa letters that they have to the courtroom. You know, kind of as an excuse to get rid of them. But maybe there will be another purpose for them. Well, hey, check it out. It's Jack Albertson, Charlie's uncle from the original Willy Wonka film. I've got a golden ticket. Well, sure enough, at the courtroom, when pressed to offer a competent authority, can Fred offer the volume of proof needed to convince the judge? Well, you probably know the ending to this by now, but just to be safe, in case you haven't seen it, no spoilers, you're going to have to go see for yourself this holiday classic to see if the judge will clear Chris Kringle, will Doris and Fred know true love, and will Susan finally get her dream house? Well, what can I say? It's a holiday classic. You've probably seen it, but if you haven't, go out and check this one out. Well, just some closing thoughts as I wrap up the review. Miracle on 34th Street was produced by 20th Century Fox and was directed by George Seaton. First things first, Edmund Gwen just owns this role. He is fantastic in this film and is perfectly convincing as this loving Santa Claus character. You know, throughout the film, he just maintains that genuinely sweet, genial character even when he's treated poorly. Well, the cane smack to the head of the psychiatrist was probably going a little too far, but you know what? The guy really had it coming. I mean, Chris Kringle could have just said, dude, you're on the naughty list and left. But anyhow, everyone that Chris Kringle interacts with agrees that he is a nice old guy, even if they're not really convinced he is Santa or not. And you really want to see him get out of this legal mess at the end of the film. So yeah, Edmund Gwen was perfect in this role. And, you know, even when I see him in other films like Them, it's hard not to see him as Santa. And, you know, the big question of this film, is he or isn't he really Santa? I like that there's enough ambiguity throughout the film that you never really know for sure. Maybe he's just a playful old guy who's a little bit nutty, or maybe he really is Santa Claus. There's never really anything like implicitly supernatural, like Chris Kringle never like materializes into energy and goes up a chimney or anything like that. But instead, he's always just presented as a very nice old man. Now, here's my two cents on this. I mean, I think that the final twist ending leads you towards believing that, yes, he really is Santa. Now, spoiler warning here. If you haven't seen the film, skip ahead a couple minutes because I'm going to actually ruin the end of the film but I need to in order to postulate my theory here, okay? So hear me out. Here's my reasoning. Chris Kringle was the one who gave Fred the specific street directions. Now think about it. Why would he volunteer to do this just out of the blue when those specific directions just happened to go past the exact house that he knew Susan wanted? And of course, the cane being there at the very end of the film kind of makes you suspicious that maybe he arranged it with his magical powers. So who knows, but I fall on Team Santa with this one. And then besides, the title of the film is Miracle. So right there is the implication of the supernatural. I mean, if he was just a well-meaning old guy with no powers, then the film should have been called something like A Curious Series of Happenings on 34th Street that may or may not have any supernatural implications whatsoever. I thought that Maureen O'Hara was great in this film as the skeptical mom who isn't sure about all of this Santa business. And I liked Natalie Wood as a sweet kid who's sort of divided between her mother's guidance and those strange ideas that Kris Kringle might actually be Santa Claus. Natalie Wood's backstory is a fascinating one, but I have already rambled on long enough in this review, so let's keep things going. John Payne balanced very well as the more easygoing character who seems cool with the whole Santa possibility. 
Now, again, my introduction to John Payne, as mentioned earlier, was Kansas City Confidential, in which he is a very different character. He's this hard, jaded war veteran in a crime movie. It's one of my favorites, actually. So this was really an interesting twist to see him here in more of a mellow, lighter role. Maybe you didn't hear what I said. I said for nothing. I looked through Maureen O'Hara's autobiography, and they had some interesting details about this film. She describes how they were actually out there as part of the actual Macy's parade in a very cold New York City. Her quote from the book, Edmund riding in the sleigh and waving to the cheering crowd were real-life moments in the 1946 Macy's parade. It was a mad scramble to get all of the shots we needed, and we got to do each scene only once. It was bitterly cold that day, and Edmund and I envied Natalie and John Payne, who were watching the parade from a window. <laughs> the New York, I guess, was so cold that year that the cameras froze on one occasion, and they wouldn't turn over. The house at the end of the film was apparently located at 24 Derby Road in Port Washington, New York. I like to look up some of these locations as part of the review, and sure enough, this looks like the same exact house with a few modifications. There was a remake of this film in 1994 starring Richard Attenborough. I haven't seen it, but can't go wrong with Richard Attenborough, so I'm going to have to check it out. I mean, hey, it's John Hammond. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Well, that's my review of Miracle on 34th Street from 1947. It's really a great film, a lot of great acting. It's a very positive, very cheerful film for the holidays. And as mentioned before, it's really just perfected by Edmund Gwen in that lead role as Chris Kringle. Now, I gave you my own theory on whether he actually is Santa or not. But you know what? If you haven't seen the film, check it out and you figure that one out for yourself. And until next time, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs>